Oh, folks, the Tar Heels got a big one a couple weeks ago when Gigi Jackson committed to the Tar Heels. Why? He is one of the highest ranked recruits in the long and storied history of North Carolina basketball. And, and to be anywhere on that list, you know that you are something. What exactly is it that Mr. Jackson is going to bring to the Tar Heels? Well, the Carolina Coach K and I are going to unpack all of that coming up on today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels. You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Wednesday, May 18th, 2022. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast. As always, I am your host, Isaac Shade, beat writer for Sports Illustrated's North Carolina website, All Tar Heels. And I am joined once again by the Carolina Coach K, Pat Kilby. It is so great to have him with us. We'll get to him in just a second. But before we do, I want to remind you that we are free and available anywhere you get podcasts. So please make sure to subscribe, like, and comment, and all those great things. We want to thank you for making Locked on Tar Heels your first listen or your first watch every single day. It means the world to us that you would join us to be part of these conversations. Coach K, what is up, brother? Man, it's awesome to be here with you again. Yes, absolutely. And for those of you that were with us last week when we talked about Simeon Wilcher, you saw that Pac was in Hera High School gym. Uh, today, it looks like he has shifted locations. Uh, and, and for those listening, you'll just have to hear what's up with that. So, uh, Coach K, where are you today? Today, I'm the Panthers Dome, but I've switched. Pretty cool deal here. I'm going to move just a little so you can see we got uh, number 21 and number 53 that is brady's uh, dad carrie manic and his uncle craig manic they are the uh, number three and number four all-time leading scorers at Hera high school right behind the one and only brady manic and so i figure uh, another showing of of the hometown of brady manic and kind of give you guys a little background about him and just thought it'd be a pretty neat little history too yeah that's awesome. Yeah, I would imagine they were they were two and three for a while, and then Brady elbowed them out of the way with those flowing locks and those raining threes. <laughs> That's exactly so. right. But I'll say this, and if you guys haven't seen him, a picture of him from high school, he did not have the locks and he did not have the beard. He was <laughs> he had the short hair and no facial hair at all. So he's definitely changed <laughs> over the years. Yes, that is for sure. And I love all these pictures we've been seeing pop up of people saying, hey, Carolina should give that last uh, scholarship they got available. And it like shows that that version of Brady and it's like to, <laughs> to Brady Bannock or something. Yep. Like. <laughs> I can't say I disagree with him. If we can find a way to do that, it'd be perfect. <laughs> That's right. I mean, there's got to be eligibility somewhere. But yeah. um, anyway, it uh, really excited uh, for that. Well, again, if you were with us last week, we talked about Simeon Wilcher, the first commitment in Carolina's 2023 class. If you didn't have a chance to listen or watch that, make sure to go back and do it. We, uh, I'll, I'll make sure to link it in the show notes, maybe even on, on the YouTube version, pop a little link on somewhere on screen so you can just click on it and go watch that. But today we are talking about the second and currently the only other commitment in North Carolina's class for 2023. Of course, even though it's only these two guys, holy smokes, they're ballers. And so uh, Coach K, if you would, just give us the skinny on our man Gigi. Give us a little bit of his background and, and who he is. Yeah, so Gigi, obviously we know him as one of the best players, uh, but a little bit about him. So Gigi, he's six foot eight, which kind of shocked me a little bit. I was I was thinking he was more like six ten, but uh, yeah. ESPN and Rivals had him listed at six eight, but he's got seven foot length. I mean, golly, the guy's long and so athletic. Two hundred and twenty pounds. I'm that long, right? I got that seven. Foot yeah, wingspan. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, totally. I can't. It, the camera can't fit you in right now. No, look, Just, you can't even see my hands. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, so Gigi, he's six foot eight, 220 pounds, got great length. Uh, Gigi's coming to us from the, uh, the lesser Carolina, from South Carolina, Columbia, <laughs> South Carolina. Um, he's coming from Ridgeview High School, plays for Team CP3, which hey, that's the connection to North Carolina right there. Um, but Gigi, so, so interestingly enough on Gigi, he's, so some rankings for him. With ESPN, he comes in at number six. Rivals, he comes in at number one. 
and then you go to the 24-7 rankings, and he comes in at number eight, and then his 24-7 composite is number four. But That's I just cute. really – Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's not uh, seven players in the country that are better than him in the class of 2023. So it's really uh, – Shocking on the two four seven ranking, but I do think that that's going to change over the course of time. There's there's no way there's seven players better than him. No, come on, man, that's just silly. That's just silly. Come on, <laughs> CBS, keep your yeah. affiliate in line. That's right. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, like GG, uh, and he might not be number one, but it's it's certain. I mean, he is uh, clearly as we see on these rankings, he is a bona fide consensus top ten guy. Um, and and more likely, as you just said, Pat. I mean, he's he's top five, if not top three, is going to compete to be. Um, depending on who else kind of comes out of the woodwork and how other guys develop, how Gigi develops, um, is going to compete for that number one overall spot. I mean, it's got to be similar to what Jabari Smith did at Auburn this year, coming out and and having a lot of that type of game. And so we'll get into player comps later, but. Um, um, We'll talk more about that. So when we look at at Gigi and and how he came to Carolina, some of the other teams in the mix, or uh, as Coach K said, the other uh, Carolina, the lesser Carolina, which is (laughs) South Carolina, um, and we'll say a little bit more about that in a second, and Georgetown and uh, the other team a couple miles down the road. Sorry, uh, Dukies, you lost out. Again. So, uh, again, it's not so easy <laughs> to win these recruiting rankings when you can't have all that negative recruiting from the uh, the so-called scandal, you know, whatever. Take that, <laughs> put it in your pipe, and smoke it. Um, but there was also some banter about Gigi maybe considering, like, the G League uh, route or, or the Ignite team there. And so um, but he just seems, from hearing him talk, he just seems like a guy that wants to go to college and get that experience. And mm-hmm. so I'm glad that, that he picked North Carolina. When we talk about South Carolina, obviously, as you as Coach K said, that is the hometown team. He had developed a, a good relationship with South Carolina's head coach, Frank Martin, whom we have to thank because they, as a seven seed, knocked off Duke as a two seed in the 2017 NCAA tournament. That was brilliant and beautiful. So thank you, Coach Martin. <laughs> but um, he, he recently was fired by South Carolina and um, went up north, and um, so as soon as that happened, South Carolina essentially fell off the map and, and weren't going to be part of this equation. And and um, but Gigi, our man, he picked the Tar Heels. He's coming. This is huge. Um, and uh, if if you want to make sure you are following him and where he's at, you can follow him on Twitter at underscore gg Jackson. Just the letter G, the letter G Jackson. And then on Instagram, it's Greg up next, and next doesn't have an e in it. So Greg up and xt. And so make sure that you go and follow our man GG there. And so um, obviously we're we're gonna talk some some strengths and weaknesses. But um, Packet, as you followed this uh, this recruitment, did you have the sense that he would choose the Tar Heels, or did you think it the that uh, Carolina came from behind to get him? I think that North – it got a little dicey there for a minute. I think North Carolina was – they had kind of jumped out to a strong lead. And then, you know, you started to hear about South Carolina coming into the mix, and he had that really strong relationship with Frank Martin. And you even heard some rumors about John Shire potentially landing him at Duke. So it kind of got dicey where it was like, is he going to come or not? And then you started to hear the G League stuff. And I think at the end of the day, he started out wanting to be a Tar Heel. He considered some others, and then he realized, I do want to be a Tar Heel. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. He weighed his options, and he came back and he said, this is where I want to be. And that's the type of players, you know, as as a Carolina fan and for those listening, that's the type of guy we want. He looked at all the other options, which were great options, especially, you know, you consider Duke, which is another top-notch program, and he chose Carolina. So you got to feel good about that. I'm I'm totally with you. It it – Felt like for a while, but and then the, the longer it kept getting elongated, I you start to worry like, are we going to get this kid yeah. or not? But I, I'm right with you. Like I think um, fans or, or you know even even us that that follow this really super closely, uh, I think there's a tendency sometimes to say, well, why is he taking so long? If it's not obvious that he should come to Carolina, then he should go somewhere else. And I think that's just bad. I think that's bad. Like yeah. like. 
I, I love what you just said there, that these kids and their families and their, their inner circles need to, to take the time to evaluate all the best information available to help them make a good decision for their lives. And, and as Gigi said, we all know that Carolina mantra, this isn't a four-year decision, it's a 40-year decision. And Gigi actually said that. And that, that was when I thought I was like, oh, yeah, he's a dark hill. That's when That's I knew, right. when, I, when I saw that tweet. And so... Um, but boy, still, he's, he's got to say it and make the declaration, and he did. Gigi Jackson coming to join Simeon Wilcher in the class of 2023. In just a second, we're going to get into talking about Gigi's strengths, his weaknesses, what he brings to the table, and uh, kind of unpack what Coach K's ideas about that are. But first, let me tell you about Built Bar. Imagine dipping your finger into a tub of yummy birthday cake frosting and then opening your eyes and realizing, oh, This is only 150 calories. That is what it's like to eat a birthday cake puff from Built. In fact, I just received my first box of these birthday cake puffs this past weekend. And honestly, I've never had anything like this before. They are available right now, but don't wait because you don't know that they will be there tomorrow. And if you haven't tried these puffs yet, let me let you in on a little secret. This is a chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bar. Yeah, delicious flavored marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. And so, you know what? This way, with these birthday cake puffs, you can make every day your birthday. Built has taken the delicious experience of biting into a fresh slice of birthday cake, wrapped it in 100% white chocolate, added sprinkles, boom, you got this delicious treat. By the way, it comes with 16 grams of protein. That's awesome. And just nine grams of sugar. So go get it today. Also, these puffs are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently than other proteins and provides tons of other health benefits. So go to built.com right now and get you some of these birthday cake puffs. You can use, while you're there, promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, that's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Well, we are getting close to NBA draft season, so please make sure you go check out the Locked On NBA Big Board. Host Raphael Barlow from the NBA Draft Junkies and author of one of the uh, best NBA Big Board newsletters is joined by Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Leif Thulin to give you as a fan an in-depth look into the NBA draft mock draft, player rankings, and of course, their big boards. It's free and available anywhere you get podcasts. All right, today we are talking Gigi Jackson, Carolina's second recruit, but the highest rated recruit in the class of 2023. Joined as we have been every week for the last several weeks by the Carolina coach K, Pat Kilby. It's great to be together. And and right now, coach, I want to hear from you as you see players all the time, great players, not great players, um, and they all have things that they bring to the table, but they all have their holes and, and holes in their game. Um, and so first, what I want to hear from you is when you look at Gigi Jackson, some strengths, and let me frame it this way. Gigi Jackson could play at Carolina right now in his senior year because of this skill. <laughs> There's a lot of those. I think that he has brings so many things to the table that make him able to play right away. Uh, first of all, he stretches the floor. He's really good at it. He can shoot it really, really well for someone his size. I mean, you take a look at Brady Manick and what he was able to do in his role. You can almost slide Gigi right there because he can shoot it. Um, he's really, really good when you get him in his back to the basket. He's got mm. that um, Kobe-esque, like, turnaround, fade away. It's really, really smooth. Kind of kicked and the so, leg. <laughs> yeah, he kind of kicks the leg and creates the space. And so he does that really well. But here's the really, really cool thing. I think Tar Heel Nation is going to love this. The kid is, for his for his size and for his length and his weight, he moves incredibly well. He's smooth. He's fast. He's athletic. And that spells one thing and one thing only, transition, which we all know that Carolina loves to do. We love to run the floor and we love to put points on the board. And I really see him thriving in transition. Like he is a great rim runner. And that's something that's going to be an impact the second he steps on campus. 
Yeah, and he's got some guards that can definitely get the ball to him in that transition. Absolutely. But um, from what you're saying, it really sounds like to me he might not need a guard. Is, is he somebody that can get out, like grab a rebound and then start the break himself? Yeah, that definitely is something that he can do. I wouldn't say I would feel comfortable with that at this moment against top-notch sure. competition. Sure, sure. I think that's definitely something that he could do over time as he develops and grows as a player because he does. I mean, you look at his game, he can put it on the floor a little bit and he can, you know, he has the capability of bringing it up. And he even has pretty good vision as a, as a guy, as a big, you know, you don't always see them being able to pass the ball yeah. well. And yeah. he, he actually does. So he, I feel like he has a high IQ, but I can just see him now being the kind of the trail guy on defense and we get that mm. rebound and him just, rim running and, and uh, catching lobs from Seth Trimble and Simeon Wilcher and R.J. Davis and all that good stuff. So Help that secondary break get going. Yes. I uh, love that. Well, what about the flip side? I, I asked you, like, he would be able to play in college right now because of this skill. What, what about the flip side of that? If there's something that would keep him from getting playing time right now, what would you say for that? Yeah, two things stand out to me um, on Gigi. Now, I should clarify, I think he's probably going to be a top five pick in the NBA draft, so he's really, really good. But I think (laughs) uh, two areas, he's got to have more motivation defensively. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really finicky because he can get by without yeah. having a lot of that motivation at yeah. the high school level because he's just better than you. Like, <laughs> and, and there's really nothing you can do about it, and he can get by that way. But as we know, when he comes to play in the ACC and he's playing Louisville and Duke and Syracuse, and it's not going to be easy. And so I think that if he will show some motivation defensively, that will go a long ways for him. But I also think offensive rebounding is something where he could improve. And I know you look hmm. at him and you think, Offensive rebounding, this guy's a great rebounder. He is on the defensive end. He cleans everything up. Um, but he's got to develop that ability to to rebound on the offensive end. And I should say partly that's uh, due to the way he plays because he does stretch the floor. He's not around the rim that's quite true. as much. Yeah. And so that, that does take away from that. But it is an area. Yeah, he could expand his game. Well, Pac, you just talked some about Gigi's defense there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that just makes sense. Like, when you're the best player on the floor, sometimes you can slack on defense. Um, it seems like from the way you talk about his athleticism that he's going to have no problem guarding uh, his position. But what about that NBA necessary capability to, to switch ball screens and be able to guard multiple positions? Do you see that in him? I do see that in him. I think it's... I I think the only thing that holds Gigi back from being able to guard one through five is his defensive motivation. Mm. And I think that's something that will change when you start talking about playing a higher level of competition. And so, yeah, I definitely think that he's somebody that can guard one through five. Now, do you want him to guard, you know, someone's one and two for a long period of time? No, probably not. But in spurts, like in ball screens and things like that, if they force a switch, I'd feel comfortable with it. And the other thing is that he can – take off a little bit of space and not rely so much on his athleticism because of his length. You know, he can guard. He can recover, yeah. Exactly. He can give, you know, extra two to three feet because he's got a seven-foot wingspan. And so that type of thing right there, that helps a lot too. Yeah. And and even if he doesn't realize he can do that yet, I'm sure Sean May is going to be in his ear saying, "Hey, it, you can you can make up a little bit of space, brother. You you do, <laughs> and uh help with with some of that. That's good." Absolutely. So if, you know, you're Hubert Davis and you look at Gigi Jackson, I mean, obviously, as you've talked about, he's a top five talent. He's got all sorts of stuff. But what, like, if you just had to trim it down to one thing and say, my name is Hubert Davis and I want this kid on my roster because blank, what would it be? Because of his ability in transition. Mm. It's a perfect, it's a perfect fit for North Carolina. I mean, he's, he's, when you think of like a prototypical in transition big and score it's him like he's really really good at and i think it's gonna be a perfect fit man that's awesome and and not to mention like obviously we're we're talking so much right now about the on-court side of his game Uh, to to hear him talk to hear his interviews he's just he's somebody you want in your locker room he's somebody you want in your huddle like 
as a coach, you yourself, when when you have this type of kid, like you with Simeon Wilcher last week, you talked about like that mentality, that that grit, that moxie that he has. And and with Gigi, not that he doesn't have that, but mm. he just seems like a guy that brings a team together well. And it's so funny because I feel like you don't often think about your top tier talent being like a glue guy, essentially. Um, but what does it mean for you as a coach to have someone like that on your team? Yeah, I think it's a huge deal. And, you know, last week when we were talking about Simeon Wiltshire, we kind of allu- talked about Coach Davis and alluded to the fact that he's getting guys that want to be at North Carolina there. And Gigi's one of those guys, not only does he want to be at North Carolina, he's kind of a North Carolina guy. He has a good personality. Mm. He's not really, you know, for being as good of a player as he is, he's not really a selfish guy. He's kind of no. about his teammates and he's about others. And, you know, one thing he did that I thought was really cool at his signing ceremony or his commitment ceremony, I should say, was he wore the cowboy hat. Did you see the cowboy hat? <laughs> I did. That was so, awesome. So some, it was. And somebody asked him about it. And he said that he basically got the idea from the Biscuit Boys when they got their cowboy hats when they were in Fort Worth for NCAA tournament. And so I was like, what? You know, that's cool. Like he's already connected to North Carolina in that sense. Like he's keeping up with them. He's got a relationship. And with, with the walk on, like he's paying attention yeah. to the walk on. Exactly. Exactly. So that makes it, it just proves the point that he's got that personality that's almost uh, infectious in a sense. Like his teammates want to be involved with him and he wants to be involved with his teammates. And so that in itself is North Carolina. I mean, that's, we get guys that, yeah, they're good players, but they're about more than their last name. They're about the name that's on the front of their jersey. And he's the type of kid that's going to be about that. That's really well said. I love that thought. And, and what a great moment to then move us um, into one more section where I, I loved our, our conversation last week where we did uh, a UNC player comp and an NBA player comp. I love uh, the unintentional pot stirring with the Rashad McCants <laughs> comparison. But seriously, I think it's a great in terms of basketball ability. It's just right there. And so I'm super excited to hear, uh, and I know everyone else is too, who you have to compare Mr. G.G. Jackson to. We're going to talk about that in just a minute, but first... Let me tell you about Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models in cars, it's increasingly more difficult for your local auto parts star to stock everything that you need. So why have to go there and go through all the questions of, of trying to talk with the clerk to tell them what you need and wait while they go find it? Instead, you could just sit at your own computer, look up exactly what you need on rockauto.com and have it and be ready. Rock Auto is a family-owned business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years now. That consistency is something that you can believe in. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer and their inventory has everything that you're going to need. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all the best parts available for your vehicle. While you're there, write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. That's rockauto.com. All right, we are talking Gigi Jackson today on Locked on Tar Heels. And just like we did last week with Simeon Wiltshire, Coach K has for us a UNC player comp and an NBA player comp. Let's see if we can stir the pot a little bit again this week. What do you have for me, Pac? All right, so UNC player comp, I really – Feeling like Tar Heel Nation is going to love me for this one as opposed to last Ooh. week's. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to drop it right here, Marvin Williams. Ooh. It, I think that's just Marv. the prime time comparison. They have a similar build, they have similar athleticism, they have a similar skill set. You know, Mar- the game has changed so much. That's, that's really yeah. the, the key. And so, Marvin, you know, when he came to North Carolina, he could really stretch the floor, he could shoot it. He was athletic. He could run really smoothly. He just operated well. And Gigi's going to be kind of that same mold. He's just going to be used in a way that probably better fits his skill set. You know, if Marvin Williams was coming out of high school right now to play in like a Hubert Davis type scheme, he it would have been a lot better for him because the way the games evolved. And so Gigi's coming into a perfect fit. But when you just look at their skill and their ability. It's it's pretty much spot on. It's pretty cool to see how similar they really are. 
Yeah, I love that. And not even just basketball. Like we were just talking about Gigi's personality. Like Marvin's just a good dude. Like it, mm-hmm. it seems to fit on multiple levels there. Um, and I, I'm with you. I, I like that idea that Marvin today would be used so differently than he was in 2005. Now, if Gigi Jackson can get a putback to beat Duke on, <laughs> uh, hey, uh, that would be <laughs> wonderful. But yeah, I, I love that. And uh, clearly, Marv Marvin is a beloved Tar Heel. He was only there one year, but just uh, has has been a lasting mark on the program. And so, man, if if Gigi could could be that and do that and and have just uh, a long tenured NBA career following his time in Chapel Hill, that'd be phenomenal. And we'd love Absolutely. to see it. Absolutely, yes. Speaking of NBA, uh, who is your NBA comp for Mr. Gigi Jackson? <sighs> All right. So NBA comp, this is where it's going to get dicey here, Isaac. Because, oh, no. Oh, you know, no. Last week, here yeah, we I, go. I, I ruffled some feathers last week, so I'm going to just go ahead and just do it again. And okay. Hope the Nation just forgives me, okay? But okay. Uh, I really do think when you when you game comparisons, I think, I think the NBA comp for Gigi is Tatum. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I alluded to it earlier, the, the turnaround fadeaway and how he's really good with his back to the basket and how he's – got the athleticism and he can kind of guard multiple positions when he wants to that's jason tatum just in the right color of blue (laughs) so (laughs) man yes absolutely and listen we we can draw a a dotted line to jason tatum we got the caleb love connection and so uh yeah we st louis it's it's a thing it's good you know what Jason Tatum you should have come to Carolina and That's that would right. have been great but whatever um yeah I, I love that and um man clearly I mean I was just watching the the Celtics yesterday and just gosh this dude is good and uh man if, if Gigi can watch that and develop into that and be um a, a Jason Tatum mold that would be phenomenal and um and and Tatum kind of, he was not as heralded as some of his classmates at Duke and then really kind of came up and rose and took things on and then clearly now is the biggest NBA stud out of that whole group. And so uh, what a progression that could be for Gigi if he is available to be able to do that. Um, And so as we look at that 2023-24 team, um, we're... We, we talked last week with Simeon about the backcourt and how it's probably already going to be a good bit loaded. Um, chances are Baycott's going to be gone. It would be nice if he came back, but we're looking at a, at a front court that might be emptied out a little bit. Who knows what will happen with transfer portal stuff. Um, probably Jalen Washington is still around. Um, Tyler Nichol is kind of like this 3-4, so he could factor into that equation somewhere. Where, where do you see, you know, obviously all we can do right now is project what we know right now, but, but how do you see Gigi fitting in with the roster? Yeah, that's going to be really interesting to see how he does fit in because like you talked about, there could be a Mondo and there could not be a Mondo. Can uh, you imagine you know, if he came back? <laughs> I think that he might go down as the most loved Tar Heel of all time. And, you know, really, I I can't. I, can't, I don't know if this what? is a like, hot. Is this a hot take? I really don't know. But I kind of think he might be because Armando's game isn't exactly NBA friendly. I mean, I hate no. to say it. I love him. He's one of my favorites ever. It's just not. And so I kind of am going on record now projecting that he's back for a fifth year. I'm just going to do it. Oh, but, my uh, gosh. I've just not even thought about the possibility. <laughs> it's a long way down so... the line but you know if you talk, if you look at it like that Armando and Gigi is like I mean that's the best you know we talked about last week having the best backcourt want we'll to have the best backcourt and the best front court, and there would be a good mixture of youth and experience and basically yeah. Yeah. we'd just be ready to hang up another banner but uh, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves that's not exactly <laughs> a for sure thing and so let's just say let's look at it like Armando is gone uh, okay, then, yeah. then you look at GG, and obviously I think he steps on campus day number one or two guy. I mean, I really do believe yeah. that. Um, he kind of fills multiple roles. He can be that pick and pop, stretch, be somebody. We can say, hey, we're going to post you up within 10 
at 12 feet of the basket, you can create your pretty much because he's so good at facing up and knocking down shots. He's got a good first step for a big man. And so he basically brings that. Now, who he's playing alongside, I mean, you look at it, you probably project it. R.J., Trimble, Wilcher, uh, Dontre Styles, Huff mm. Johnson. That's really good, one through four, with a little bit of depth there. Um, and then, you know, that fifth guy, you know, you mentioned Jalen Washington. Five, yeah. But yeah. he's kind yeah. of more like a stretch four and less like a yeah. true five. Uh, yeah. Will Shaver is somebody I'm, – I'm high on him. I think he's got some improvements to make. I do sure. think that he could be um, a Luke May type mold, though, like somebody that comes on campus not as highly recruited, but he just works his tail off, gets better, and yeah. ends up playing significant minutes. And so yeah. it'll yeah, be really he's more curious. the size of a prototypical five, uh, Will Shaver is. Yes. And and not, like you said, neither Washington nor Gigi are that. And so you've got to have somebody that comes in behind Mondo if Mondo does, in fact, leave. Yeah, and that's where – and this day and time, this day and age, the transfer portal is we can go Huge. get somebody. Yeah. And so yeah. I don't know that that comes through the uh, recruitment of someone in the 2023 20, class that could play that five spot or we go get them in the portal. The other thing to think about that I wanted to mention was the um, upticking recruitment of Matas Buzelis and mm-hmm. – you know, you start looking at him. I don't know how much you've watched or Tar Heel Nation yeah. has watched of this guy, but he's definitely trending towards North Carolina right now, and he's he's pretty special. He's awesome to watch. He's like a six <laughs> ten guard. I mean, it's pretty yeah. crazy the way he can handle it and the way he can shoot. And so maybe it's a transition to playing a little bit of small ball and having five guys on the floor that can shoot and – guard one through five and you just switch almost everything. like a true yeah true positionless basketball almost yeah and point. i could see that yeah. i mean i don't think that hubert would be about or beyond making that adjustment because he's shown to be pretty uh yeah. modern thinking in the way that he coaches and a lot of his concepts already are nba based and so that's another possibility it'll be interesting to see which way that goes because it could go a lot of ways yeah yeah, so uh, I mean that would, man. I we've got this two person class right now in in Wiltshire and Jackson, and then this idea of Buzelis potentially coming in. I, I know he hasn't committed yet, but I feel like uh, I say yet. Who knows that he, if he will or not? But I feel like we need to do one of these videos on him to to evaluate him and, and let the Carolina family know what potentially could be with him. So maybe we should look at doing that in a couple weeks and, and wrapping our brains around him as well. Um, well, Pac, Carolina Coach K, anything else you want to say about Gigi before we sign off today? <laughs> All I'm going to say is just imagine this right here. Seth Trimble, Simeon Wilcher, Gigi, Carolina, traditional fast break, pick and roll, lobs. It's going to be awesome. I can't, you know, I can honestly say I've been a fan my whole life and I can't imagine or think of a better time to be a Carolina fan than right now. It's so exciting. I can't wait to watch it. Let's just ruin John Shire's first couple years at Duke. Let's just make Let's it do awful it. for him. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. So good. Well, folks, that is it for today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels. Uh, thank you so much for diving in with us. Um, please go subscribe to the show wherever you get podcasts. Uh, make sure you comment and like. Let us know your thoughts on Gigi Jackson, why you love this fit, how you think he and Simeon Wiltshire form a great 23 class. Uh, go light up Coach K again for his takes on player comps and uh, <laughs> make make that happen. Uh, as always, you can follow the show at Locked on heels on twitter you can follow pat kilby at coach underscore k 23 and you can follow me at isaac shade i-s-a-a-c-s-c-h-a-d-e uh man uh, it's it's wednesday we still got two more days to come this week more great content coming up can't wait to share all of that with you but for coach k I'm Isaac Shade, and I want to ask you to make Locked On ACC your second listen of today. Get all your daily ACC news in less than 30 minutes, free and available wherever you get podcasts. 
Well, it's Wednesday. You've spent it with us. Thank you. Great talking about all these players. And we want to remind you that it is always a great day to be a Tar Heel. Until tomorrow. Peace.